this tutorial we're going to be covering the latest GPT Builder, which is also known as ChatGPT Builder. It's just been released by OpenAI um, just recently. I actually got access to it this morning, so I just wanted to jump straight in and make a video and show everyone how it works and how you can use it to really help your business and help yourself around generating content and utilizing the latest AI trends. So anyway, instead of wasting so much time, let's just jump straight into what it is and let's get building. So what is GPT Builder? So basically it's an, um, an easy way to build AI agents. So before you'd have to use a lot of custom code or um, platforms to really have it work together and follow instructions and just work automatously every time. And those were called really AI agents. So they're designed to do specific things over and over again, and you don't have to keep telling them what to do. So it's obviously a really great way of that sort of automation with AI. But what happened was is that OpenAI just released this. So it just ha um, so happened a couple of days ago, they released um, the news and then also released the product. And it just allows you to, instead of having to use third party platforms to build automated AI agents using GPT Builder. So now that we've covered exactly what that is all about, uh, let's just dive in and start using it. So as the example today, uh, what I'll do is build something that's pretty common for most people when using um, AI at the start, and that's a blog builder. So we're going to have a uh, build blog post for us basically. So when you start off, you're going to see it like this, and it's going to ask you what you'd like to create. Um, you can also go configure and just do it all manually, but I'm imagining it's best for you to use the builder and then uh, make some configurations where you want things to be a bit different. So let's give it some instructions. I will. I have some pre-set up, so not to worry about that. And here we go. So what we're going to tell it is, I would like to create an AI blog writer. The blog posts always need to be 700 words or over, and always be optimized for Google search engine. Um, and then in brackets, SEO. I am in the web development, uh, so the website development industry. All blog posts um, provided need to be related specifically to website design. So this part here is where you would change to your specific industry. So tell it what you do. Say, um, you know, are you in the real estate industry? Are you a builder? Are you a professional services? Um, just give it a little bit of background of what you want those blog posts to really be about. But now that we've got that, let's uh, see it go. All right, so it's building it for us. Takes a little bit of time, but uh, that's what happens when you use automation. You have to wait, but it's better than me having to do it. There we go. So it's created as behavior. So it goes for GPT um, name, I suggest Web Wordsmith. Does that sound good to you? I think that sounds pretty good. So you go, yes, that sounds great. Now I will give you one tip. Always treat GPT or chat GPT nicely. You're gonna get better content uh, the nicer you treat it. I don't know why, I guess because that's just how it operates. So as a rule of thumb, use thank you, use please, and can you do this, and just treat it nicely, and the content you'll get back is usually very good. Okay, so it's generating the profile picture. Great, so that's the profile picture it came up with. I think that's awesome. So be like, thank you, the image is great. Let's use that. There we go. Right, so now it's asking about tone. So we say we we want it oop, to use a professional because I'm in the professional industry, but also friendly. Oops, spelled that wrong. Friendly tone. Why? Because I'm a friendly guy. So we want to have that friendly tone in there. Great, so now it's adding those rules in. Amazing, so now we've got how should Websmith handle situations where the blog posts and topics are, uh, be broad or unclear? Which is a pretty good question. So what it's asking is what it should do if it doesn't really have enough information. So we say if there is a massive gap in knowledge, ask for more information. If you don't need more, please uh, make an educated guess. Now you're probably wondering why we want to say that. And the reason why is because I don't want the um, AI agent to be asking me for more information every time. 
um, just because it might have a little bit of a gap. We don't really care about that. We want it to be able to do its thing, but if there's a massive gap and it doesn't really know what to do, it should ask us for it. <clears throat> okay, so let's see what happens now. All right, so it's making the update. Goes lastly, should wordsmith occasionally include personal antidotes to um, illustrate points, or would you prefer to um, it's direct, uh, stick strictly to the factual information and professional insights? Um, let's say, uh, yes, include time to time. Okay, so that's been updated. Goes web web services are ready, sweet. So now it is ready, but I don't want you to use it straight away because we're building blog content. We got to remember that Google has rules around the stuff, and so what we're going to do is we're going to jump into configure. And as you can see, all this information has been added. So we've got the name, the description, the instructions here that is created. It's even got conversation starters. So let's say write a post on CSS trends, explain the importance of responsive design, which is all great. Now what we have here is a new one called knowledge. And what this does is allow you to upload documents with further information, which means you can really give it um, up-to-date information and specific rules and stuff that maybe it doesn't know. So what we want to upload is actually the document provided by Google, and it's the um, search rules, basically. I forget the word for it. It's um, just the document. It's about 170 pages, but it just goes over the best practice for SEO and you know posting content on Google. So I'm going to upload that here. So it's the search quality guidelines, that's what it's called. So let's upload that. Perfect. So now that it's got that, it means that um, what was good, it's got, it knows how to, what it should do when creating SEO content. Okay, so if we come back over here, let's give it a go. Eh? So we're going to discuss, let's say write a post on CSS trends. Sounds good enough. Now remember we told it that it needs to do a minimum of 700 words. So when I tested this before, the first version didn't do 700 words and I then had to further clarify and then it was able to push out that content. So I'm going to assume the same thing is going to happen again and this is why you need to test before just blindly trusting. See, because that does not look like 700 words to me, which I guess it won't be, so let's grab it. So we grab all that content um, from about here, and we go word count, and then the word count is 435 words, so not what we want. This so goes, please further enhance, let's change that, let's further enhance the, let's say bot, please make sure it always does a minimum of 700 words. There we go. So let's make it do that. So now it's updating it. Amazing. So that's been updated. So let's try it again. Write a post on CSS trends. Okay, it's looking good. It's looking a little bit longer. Not perfect. But it could also be the article. It's a bit of a weird one. But let's see. It actually might hit 700. There's quite a lot of content here. So let's see. There we go. So let's copy all that. Whoops, come down all the way up to here. Let's see how much words it has. 622. That was close, but I want to test something out. Let's say we want to try again. So let's go, please write, please write a blog post 
about responsive website design. And let's see if it manages to do 700 this time. <clears throat> Taking a little bit of time. If it doesn't work straight um, in the next couple of seconds, I'll just refresh the page. Keep in mind, there we go. Now it is good to remember that this uh, platform for the GPT Builder was released a couple of days ago. So I'm going to be expecting that there's going to be bugs, uh, things won't work properly, or maybe it can be a bit slow. It's very normal to see when something's just been released. So um, don't fret too much. I know that they'll be doing updates upon updates over the next few months for it. That's a really good looking article so far. Lots of detail. And to anyone ever doing, uh, let's say, AI for your blog writing, always make sure it removes the remove the conclusion. It's pretty. It's basically screams out, "I wrote this of AI." Okay, so let's see where we got. Six hundred and fifty-six words. So still not perfect, but you could ask it to increase it. Please increase the word word. Sorry, word count for for the latest article you provided. So let's see if it will take that article and increase the word count. Because we're about 50 words short of the 700, which isn't too bad. So I will say as well, always double check the work that you're getting from AI. Now I know you're probably thinking that really takes away the automation, but AI, you can't just let it run blindly. You need to always make sure that you're checking the output that it's giving you before you put your name against it and push it out into the world because you really don't want um, some slight mistake in there that's going to end up costing you. Great, so what, we're, what it's saying is that you can further expand on it from here and add it to the current system. Let's see, so where would have it started? Right. So if you take this and then let's say we'll get rid of the conclusion, take it from about here, oops, sorry, go back. So what it did is it gave us extra content to add to the end. Um, also taking out the conclusion and rewriting it, so you'd have to make that edit. Um, it is possible to just tell it to combine the whole thing and provide it again, but I won't make us go through that as I know you're probably getting tired watching. But basically with the extra added um, content it provided, we're at 1,103 words, which is great. So as you can see, it's just that simple to build a builder, and then what happens is, is if you go save, uh, only people with a link, let's just say only me, so that's if you want it to be private to yourself. Great, <clears throat> and there you have it. So now when you go, um, now you'll have this new whole system that you can just use on repeat again and again and again uh, without having to retrain or re-instruct it to give you information. It's preset to do this. So thanks for watching the video. Um, it was a very quick tutorial just how to build your own GPT um, AI agent. And yeah, if you've got any questions, drop them down in the comments section and I'll be happy to answer, um, answer them. Or if you've got anything you'd like to share, drop it in there as well and I'd be great to check out what you've managed to create. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and see you in the next video.